uh, and I was reading the transcripts that were released online. Someone sent them to me. And, uh, I, you know, I'm kind of confused, though, Jared, because I remember back in back when you filed the lawsuit, the first, like, rebuttals I was hearing from the DNC was sort of like this. And I'm paraphrasing, man. It was like, yeah, well, if we cheated you, you should have known that we be that right. we would be impartial. I mean, that we would be partial. That we uh, that we would have biases. So you should have already mm-hmm. known that. And now it seems like they're kind of denying that, and they're saying, "Oh well, no." I, I mean, I'm, it's, it's a little different message now. What right. what is their defense now? Well, they have a number of um, uh, uh, arguments that they've put forth. And we went through those on Tuesday. Um, You know, two of them uh, stick out in my mind because um, they're very, well, you know, I would use the word bold to describe them. I don't think they're supported by the case law. And I think they're very, very disturbing, uh, just the fact that the DNC is relying on these positions. But the first argument they're making is that they don't believe there's a legally enforceable obligation to run Uh, the primaries in a fair and impartial manner. And in fact, uh, the lawyer for the DNC uh, said in open court last week, as an officer of the court, that in his view, the DNC could go into uh, smoke-filled rooms, uh, smoke cigars, uh, pick the candidates between them. These are, you know, the leaders of the DNC smoking cigars and uh, the the uh, we'd have no legal recourse whatsoever if they did that. So that's their first position that um, you know came out in court last week. Um, that is you know they're trying to use to say that uh, there's just no legal claim here that the court can rule on. Uh, the second position that's come out now is that they don't believe that the words impartial and even-handed uh, have a sufficient enough meaning so that the court could actually rule in this case. In other words, they don't think that those words actually mean anything, and it would, um, you know, they're too ambiguous for the court to decide uh, whether or not um, the uh, DNC was being impartial and even-handed. And I think that's just a completely shocking um, and uh, really crazy argument but uh, it's in the transcript. You don't have to take my word from it. <laughs> right. It's it's in the transcript. It's you can see. Crazy. It's yeah. crazy, Jared. That uh, well, well, look. If they say it's our party, we do what we want to do. We go where we want to go, and you know, we play the music we want to play at our own parties. That's cool. But what about the federally matching funds that they receive? Isn't that like based on the fact that you know the government's saying that there are they're going to run their party in a certain mm-hmm. way? Like, how do they get money for a private organization? Well, here's here's the thing. I mean, we live in a what for all intents and purposes is a two party democracy. It's been like this for a long, long time. And we've had two parties that, uh, you know, you, you have other I'm not trying to denigrate anyone else that, you know, be, you know, believes in third parties or has uh, uh, put resources into third parties. Uh, you know, I I voted for third party candidates, but you know, for all intents and purposes, you have to be either a Democrat or a Republican uh, to win uh, an office like President of the United States. And so, what that means is that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, for that matter, they are the custodians of the democratic institutions of this country because they're responsible for running the primary elections, as you pointed out. And so. If we live in a democracy, and if you read the Constitution, it's pretty clear that this is supposed to be a democracy, and I don't think anyone disputes that, then how could it be that uh, the Democratic Party could run its uh, primaries in anything but an even-handed, impartial manner? I mean, that's what an even-handed and impartial election is. You don't. None of the candidates are favored, and the voters decide. And so I just think it's a completely... Um, bogus argument. Um, not only does it fly in the face of the Constitution, but it flies in the face of the Democratic Party's own charter, which says uh, that it was uh, that it has to be fair and even-handed. And it also flies in the face of what the Democratic Party's leaders, including uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, were saying over and over again in the in the public 
uh, eye in the media as the elections were going on. They were saying, oh, we're neutral. We're not taking any sides. So, you know, on all those levels, um, we see a clear contradiction between uh, what, in our view, the Democratic Party is obligated to, to do as one of the two major parties in this country uh, by the terms of its own charter, on the one hand, and what the DNC is coming into court and saying, which is that we have no obligation to run these primaries in a fair and impartial manner. In fact, we could just sit in a room, smoke cigars, yes. and decide <clears throat> among yeah. us, you know, us uh, important Democratic folks or what have you, that um, this is going to be the candidate. 